Hi, welcome to the 10-minute video summary of the message that was shared at Henry the Christian Fellowship on the 17th of March, 2024. My name is Don Bolt. I'm the pastor of the church. I'd like to take about 10 minutes and share some highlights from this past Sunday's message. Um, we're doing a transformational year, these being the weeks that lead up to uh, Resurrection Sunday. We're uh, uh, looking into Jesus as he approaches the cross. And uh, we're also uh, taking some time with Psalm 119. So it all weaves together very nicely this week. So uh, Psalm 119, 65 through 72. Uh, you have dealt well with your servant, O Lord, according to your word. And just a, a, just a pointer here. If you uh, are pursuing a relationship with Jesus Christ and you know, sometimes you get a little confused, understand he's going to pursue that relationship with you according to his word okay so teach me good discernment and knowledge for i believe in your commandments very important you know just i don't just know i believe in them okay so before i was afflicted i went astray but now i keep your word okay uh, two things to be noted here one is that god sets things up so that if we wander off this course that leads to life uh you know we run into things that tend to push us back onto the course and he says he says it right here okay uh, before in fact later he says it's good for me to be afflicted all right so um yeah you are good and you do good very very important that, that we maintain that, that that we believe that god is good and he does good you know there's things don't always go our way but that doesn't mean god isn't good it doesn't mean that he doesn't do good okay teach me your statutes the arrogant have formed a lie against me okay so this is you know a lot of this is lining up with the cross okay jesus is surrounded by people speaking lies against him while he's hanging on the cross okay uh jesus is on that cross having gone through the garden of gethsemane uh and believed that the the, the father's will was what was good okay you are good and you do good okay that and, and that basically everything that was happening uh, in Jesus' life uh, as he approached the cross was happening according to the word that God had given to us, okay? So uh, let's move on, okay? So to understand our relationship with God, we look to his word, okay? We need God to teach us uh, things that we need uh, to live by his word, okay? That, that's what this uh, psalm just got through telling us. Affliction, rightly received, it keeps us on the right path. And again, this idea of picturing Jesus on that cross with his enemies surrounding the foot of his cross speaking lies against uh, him and uh, sometimes i'm sure from that view the people stand at the foot of the cross look like they're doing better than jesus but that was far from the truth so jesus in the garden of gethsemane wrestles with surrendering to the will of the father you know if it's possible take this from me if it's uh, not possible then let, either way let your will be done is what uh, jesus concludes in the garden all right but in, in the end jesus does not turn back okay for the joy that was set before him, we're told. He is, a, this is over in Hebrews 12, 2. Uh, he it says, what did he do? He set, because that joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. The work of salvation is now done. Uh, he is seated at the right hand of the Father. But unless you get a picture of him just kind of sitting there hanging out, no, he's interceding for us. The Word of God tells us this, okay? So now we're going to move on. And, and there's, you know, in Isaiah, some of the parts of Isaiah are written poetically and uh, there are some things that we call songs in there, and one of them is the song of the suffering servant. Uh, it's found in Isaiah 55 through 10. And uh, anyways, um, it speaks of the suffering servant, the Messiah. Okay, so the Lord has opened my ear, and I was not disobedient, nor did I turn back. Okay, Jesus heading into the, the garden here and, into, and up to the cross. Okay, I gave my back to those who strike me, my cheeks to those who pluck out the beard. I did not cover my face from humiliation and spitting. Again, Jesus. Uh, for the Lord helps me, therefore I am not disgraced. Okay, again, this thing that he believes that God is good and does good and that everything is, is proceeding according to the word. Okay, so it, it says he's not disgraced. All right, what is happening is what was supposed to happen. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint. Hang on to that, okay? I've set my face like a flint, and I know that I will not be ashamed. Uh, for he who vindicates me is near. He who content, who's going to contend with me? Let us stand up to each other. Who has a case against him? Me. Let him draw near to me. Of course, that's what's going on at the foot of the cross and in the trials that occur uh, before the cross. All right, behold, the Lord helps me. And who is he who condemns me? Behold, they will all wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them. You know, the, the people that, that, that brought all this against Jesus are not the ones. Remember, Jesus is the one who's lifted up. Who is among you that fears the Lord, that others, uh, that obeys the voice of his servant, that walks in uh, darkness and has no light? Let him trust in the name of the Lord and rely on his God. So in the end, okay, Jesus did not turn back. He set his face like a flint, and knowing 
uh, that, that he would not be ashamed. He went forward. Jesus set his face to go uh, to the garden and to the cross long before uh, he was really that close to, to approaching Jerusalem. Back in uh, Luke chapter 9, verse 51, coming out of a Samaritan village where he had been rejected, it says it came to pass, uh, when the time was come that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. And this is this is some time before, you know, we get into the Holy Week events, you know. All right, so Jesus didn't turn his back in his hour of temptation. Okay, this is Matthew 26, uh, 36 through 42. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, some sort of wine press, we think, and said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and uh, began to be grieved and distressed. And he said to them, my soul is, uh, is deeply grieved, even to the point of death. Remain here and keep watch with me. And he went a little beyond them and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, So you men could not keep watch with me for an hour? Keep watching and praying. He's discipling them even as he is approaching the cross. He says, he says Keep on watching and praying that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. I, that 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 competition between the the human Jesus and and, and the fullness of Godhead bodily, uh, you know, the, the 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 divine Jesus. That's right. He's saying, look, if the spirit is willing, it's the flesh. That's where the struggles takes place. And so he's pray that you don't enter into temptation. And he went away a second time and prayed and saying, my father, if this cannot pass away unless I drink it, your will be done. Okay. And he did not turn back. Some deeper insights from these. Okay. Over in Luke. Um, we find that God is often doing more than an outsider can see or appreciate, okay? Because Luke is the only gospel that records this. Uh, in Luke 22, 43 and 44, Now an angel from heaven appeared to him, only to him, uh, strengthening him. And being in agony, he was praying very fervently, and his sweat became like drops of blood falling down upon the ground. We don't know all that that means, but... Uh, but, you know, there's, there's deeper things that are happening oftentimes when things are going on. Maybe the outsider can't see, but you can. Jesus discipled them to the very last. There were missed opportunities because they fell asleep. But nonetheless, Jesus reaching out to them and training them and teaching them to be his followers after he uh, endures the cross. And he says, Terry, you ye here and watch with me. Okay, Luke 22, 45. And when they arose from prayer, he came to the disciples, found them sleeping from sorrow. Okay, and he said that they were just worn out from the grief. Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not enter into temptation. Okay, he knew uh, the hours of temptation that were coming, but that's for all of us. So, you know, pray that we don't enter into temptation. So Jesus is t showing us that, you know, whatever you're facing, he prayed. You know, whatever you're facing, he told them pray. So whatever you're facing, pray, 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 and believe that God will come to you. All right, what did Jesus say? He said in Luke 22, 31 and 32, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded permission to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail, and you, once you have, re have turned again, strengthen your brothers. And Jesus is still interceding and praying for us before the Father in heaven today. John 14, 18, and with this we'll close, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. After a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live, you will live also. In that day, you will know that I am in my Father, you in me, and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and will disclose myself to him. All right, so, you know, as we're uh, next week going to be looking at the, at the crucifixion and then, you know, Good Friday comes and, uh, and then, then that, that wonderful Resurrection Sunday, I just want us to be allowing this to be a time when Jesus himself uh, disciples us and prepares us for the life that he has for us.